Hey guys, welcome to Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'm Jeremy Yoder. Today I'm doing something that is long overdue. Today I'm gonna to show you my favorite way to cook a pork belly. I went down to my local Costco and picked up a pork belly. If you guys don't know what pork belly is, it's basically where the bacon comes from. So you might look at a pork belly and think it looks like bacon and you are exactly correct because it's the same cut. Bacon is just cured and sometimes smoked and then you slice it up and then you fry it and it's delicious and amazing and everybody loves it for good reason. But pork belly is something absolutely incredible. And I'm gonna show you a little bit of a trick at the end so that you can use this. You can pull it out anytime you need to have barbecue on demand. This pork belly is right at about 10 pounds and it's not super even. And so what I like to do to make cooking it easier and to make it cook more evenly is take it and cut it into fourths. Because I've tried it where you just cut it into cubes from the start. I've tried it where you leave the whole thing as one big piece. And the best I've ever had it, I have to give a shout out to my man, Adam Walt. He's actually a patron who brought this to an event that I was doing in Michigan and it was lights out amazing absolutely incredible. So I asked him, what did you do? So I've stolen his method and I'm gonna share it with you guys. He already cleared it, so we're good there. There's a, a couple slight variations to how I do it, but I think you guys are really, really gonna enjoy it, especially if you love Asian flavors. And the reason I say Asian flavors is because we're gonna make a marinade. So we're not actually cooking this thing until tomorrow, but we have to let this marinade overnight. The marinade is super simple and super delicious. We have mirin. It's like a Japanese rice wine. It's got a lot of savoriness to it. It's really, really tasty stuff. And then of course, soy sauce. This rice wine has a little bit of sugar in it. The soy sauce of course has a lot of salt. And so the sugar and salt are gonna be able to penetrate. It's gonna be kind of like a brine that we're gonna be using for this pork belly. And the flavors you create on the outside in combination with the smoke and the crispiness you get at the very end, Ah, oh, so good. And then lastly, this is the part of the marinade that I've changed. I like spicy, I like chilies a whole lot. If you guys could be at my house and see me eat most of my meals, most of them are accompanied by hot sauce. I love hot sauce. So to keep it Asian, I'm gonna add some gochujang, which is a fermented chili paste from Korea. So these three in combination, I think provide absolutely incredible flavor. So I'm gonna add that mirin to the bowl, then the gochujang, I'm gonna whisk it together so it's all evenly distributed. Because once I add the soy sauce, it kinda gets too dark to see if it's evenly mixed. Then I'll add the soy sauce, probably 20 ounces of mirin, 20 ounces of soy sauce, and a good squeeze of this gochujang. At that point, we're gonna take the pork belly out, cut it into fourths, and then we're gonna put it in a container to marinate. So stick around. Okay, so I like to cut these into quarters because this piece, pretty thick. This piece on the other hand, not so thick. So when I cook them, I don't want them to cook unevenly and I have one huge piece of meat where one part's done, one part's not. So doing it this way, I get pretty consistent cooking on each piece. I turn these pieces so that they're all fat side up in here because I want all that meat to be exposed to the marinade all around it. Because if the meat's exposed on top, maybe it's not getting the same kind of salt penetration that it would otherwise be getting. At least that's my reasoning behind it. It may work, it may not work, but that's my thinking. Now it's time to close it up, put it in the fridge, and I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. It's the next day and it's time to get this pork belly on the smoke. So I'm gonna be using a shaker with just 16 mesh black pepper in it because this already has been sitting in that soy sauce. It doesn't need any more salt. I don't need to add a complex rub or anything. I just want some black pepper for two reasons. One, because I really like pepper and two, because it gives it a nice look on the outside. So I'm gonna take these out, put them on the cutting board, hit them with some pepper, put them on. So I'm starting off at 200 degrees. I'm using Naughty Wood Plum Wine Pellets because I called them up and asked them what they were doing and so I ordered some of those. So you can call them 
get some yourself. I tested them when I was in California and they are awesome. So I'm excited about that. And then I'm using some Knotty Wood Almond Chunks in the smoke box in this Woodwind Pro. So let's get these pork bellies ready. So this is exactly what I'm looking for, an even coat of black pepper on the top, the bottom, and the sides. This one looks really good. Let's get them out. Now we're taking our almond chunk, putting it in the smoke box. I've got the valve to the smoke box wide open right now because I want that almond chunk to start catching. Once I see smoke starting to come out of there, then I'm gonna close the door because right at the beginning, that's when we have an opportunity to get a lot of smoke flavor on there. So that's what I'm trying to do. So as soon as I actually am starting to see smoke right now. So I'm gonna close this up, get a lot of smoke in the first hour cooking at 200. Then we're gonna bump it up to 250 to start rendering fat and get it to tenderness. I have some exciting news. My wife and I just bought our first house, and so this background is gonna be changing pretty soon. But another thing I wanna tell you about is today's sponsor, Policy Genius. And the reason those two things are related is because I realized that if something happens to me, who's gonna pay the mortgage? Is it you, you Lieutenant Weinberg? Bonus points if you get that reference. But somebody's gonna have to do it because I'm not gonna leave my family destitute if something were to happen to me. And Policy Genius is the best way to find life insurance. As a matter of fact, the insurance company that insures our cars and some other things called me and said, hey, you need to get more life insurance. And they gave me some offers. And then what I found was looking on Policy Genius gave me so many better options. Policy Genius was invented to modernize the life insurance industry. So what they do is they compare policies from top companies like AIG and Prudential, and they're not incentivized to choose one over the other so you get the best deal available. For example, with Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $17 a month with $500,000 of coverage. Policy Genius has licensed agents who can help you find what you need. You can get coverage in as little as a week and even avoid unnecessary medical exams. To start comparing quotes and to simplify insurance buying, Check out Policy Genius. Head over to policygenius.com slash madscientistbbq. That's policygenius.com slash madscientistbbq. And one more time, thank you to them for sponsoring today's video. It's been about two hours at 200 degrees. Let's see what these look like. Smoky, smoky. I started off fat side down because I wanted to make sure that all of that meat side got an even dose of smoke and there wouldn't be any great obstructing it. At this point, I'm gonna bump it up to 250 and I wanna start rendering fat, so I'm gonna go fat side up. That means that the juices are all gonna kinda of drip to the bottom and keep it moist. I don't wanna to have to deal with spraying. If you wanted to spray to keep everything nice and moist on the meat side, you could use something like 50-50 water and since we're doing Asian flavors, you could go with like a rice vinegar or something like that is what I would suggest. But I'm gonna flip these over, bump up the temp and keep going. These are the pellets. They're darker than any of the other knotty wood pellets, but that's because the blend that goes into making these is different than any of the other knotty wood pellets. So I called them because I couldn't find any plum pellets. I ordered a whole bunch. I actually got a pallet of pellets and then asked what else they had. They said they had some of these. So I said, can you please send some? They said, ah, well, they're not really released yet. We're planning on doing a holiday release. And so eventually after much pleading, they decided to send me a few bags too. So I'm excited to be cooking with these. I really, really like them. So far, plum has been my favorite, but I think the plum wine might actually surpass it. That's why it doesn't have a real bag. It's just a white bag.
These have been on for about five hours. I'm thinking they're probably done or really close, so let me check. Let's see if it's tender. I'd say so. It's good. <laughs> this feels actually still a little bit tight. That feels great. This feels a little tight. We're gonna let that keep going. This guy is done. I'm gonna pull him off of there. Gently, gently. Ooh. All right, this smells incredible. And it almost looks like brisket bark on the outside of this. So these are good. It smells so good. These are gonna be amazing. All right, so what I'm gonna do is let this thing rest because if I cut into it right now, then it can kind of fall apart. Now, I'm gonna let you guys in on a little bit of a secret. And I'm not even criticizing this, but a lot of times people on YouTube will cut into their briskets when they're super hot because all the juice is flowing around and stuff, but that's actually a terrible way to cut into your brisket. I try to always avoid doing that, but that's not to say I don't do other things like make sure the light's perfect and do other things to try to make the food look as good as possible. But if you see it where they're slicing into something and it's crazy hot and pouring out juice, might look good on camera, but it's not a good call to do when you're actually cooking. So this, even though I want to cut into it right now and show you all the juice pouring out, I'm going to let it cool enough to where I could actually serve it. And then I'll cut into it because I want you to be able to evaluate how you did in comparison to this. So if you try to follow my rules exactly, and then yours doesn't look the same way, you're left scratching your head thinking, well, what did I do wrong? Now I've been the victim of this in the past because I would try to copy things that I'd seen. I'm not gonna mention any names, but I would try to copy things that I'd seen and then it wouldn't taste the same, wouldn't look the same. It was just different. So I don't wanna do that to you guys. So we're gonna let this guy rest. I'm gonna check on a couple of these other ones and see if they're ready to come off. But we're gonna allow it to cool to at least uh, 150 degrees and then we can cut it open. At this point, there are a couple different paths you can take. The first is you can cube this once it cools down, sauce it, put it back onto glaze. The second is you can eat it just as it is, cut it into pieces and go to town. It's delicious, especially if you're gonna do something like ramen, it's gonna be incredibly good. Then the third thing is something that a lot of barbecuers are after, but is really hard to find, a quick and easy barbecue item that doesn't involve hours of cooking. So you take one of these, you put it in a vacuum seal bag, you vacuum seal it, you can put it in the freezer if you know you have company coming over, you put it in the fridge. Then once it's thawed, you take it out, you cube it up, you put some sauce to glaze on it, you put it in the oven, and by the time the sauce has glazed, each individual piece is hot and boom, instant real barbecue. Okay, it's finally cooled off enough for us to try it. I'm gonna take a slice off of this and try it just as it is. This is very similar to how it was done the first time I tried something like this and it was incredible. Now, one other note that I wanna give you guys before we move on is you can wrap this in foil or paper with lard or whatever you wanna do. I don't because I want as much texture on the outside as possible. I want the inside to be soft and I want anything to be chewy in there, but I want a little bit of crunch and crisp on the outside. Not so much though that it makes it difficult to eat. That's why I don't cube it from the beginning because in the past, a lot of times it's a little crunchier than I actually enjoy eating. So that's why I do it this way. Let's see how it tastes. All right, let's taste this. Cut a chunk. Smells heavenly. Looks great. Oh, it tastes even better. Oh. It's so good. Man, that's so good. Feels sacrilegious, but I'm kind of feeling like, who needs bacon? Man, I'll go for another one. The fat just melts. It's almost like cotton candy, it just disintegrates. Man. So doing it that way and eating it just as it is, you're gonna get Asian flavors. If you're not a fan of Asian flavors, I wouldn't suggest doing it that way. But I would suggest cooking it the same way because you get the same texture. You can use whatever your favorite barbecue rub is. You can use a meat church rub. You can use uh, an Oak Ridge barbecue rub. You can use whatever you want. But the moral of the story is, if you cook it this way and get great smoke flavor on there, you render the fat really well, you're gonna be a really happy camper. And if you do it in quarters like this, I think you get more even cooking. Because they didn't all come off at the same time. As a matter of fact, the first one came off about 30 minutes before the last one did. And it's just a more convenient way to do it. And then doing it this way, I like to take it, vacuum seal it, and freeze it, use it for another purpose another day. It's super, super good. Next, we must cube some and sauce some. So 
I'm gonna use some of this sauce. Shout out to the guys at Goldie's. Shout out to Derby Barbecue. I'm gonna try this out. I haven't tried this on a pork belly before, but I know I like it, and so I'm sure I'm gonna like this combination. So I'm gonna pour some of this on here. There we go, it's maybe a little excessive. You could do this in a pan, but at this point, I'm gonna cut this into cubes, kind of roll it around in the sauce, then put it in a pan, put it back in the smoker, and once that glazes up, then we're gonna have version number two of this incredible pork belly. When I said we were gonna put these on a pan, I lied. We're gonna be using a trivet. It has more surface area and this thing will glaze up more quickly. And then I just like them better. Maybe I got carried away and made some of these too big, but it's my pork belly and I like it. Let's wait about 15 minutes. And actually, I'm gonna bump this temperature to, let's go 290, rock and roll. If you guys wanna try some of my food, guess what, you can on November 5th, I'm doing a charity cook. So I'm cooking for all the people who show up. So we're gonna do brisket and ribs. If you wanna try some food that I've cooked in my big smokers for 16 hours, Here's your chance to do it, and it's all for a good cause. So November 5th, Simpsonville, check out the link in the description to sign up. When the glaze is sticky, you're ready to rock and roll. Let's try one of these. Maybe I did get carried away making these a little big, but here we go, try the whole thing. Mmm, <laughs> man, that's good. Pork belly burn ends are a staple in barbecue for a reason, that was Super, super, super good. The tanginess from the vinegar in the sauce really makes all the other flavors jump. It's so good, so satisfying to you. I'm gonna eat another one. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button down below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Also, if you wanna try my food, November 5th, Simpsonville, Kentucky, check out the link in the description below. You can sign up and I will cook brisket and ribs for you and we'll hang out and have a great time. Finally, if you wanna follow me on Patreon, go on over to Patreon. You can be entered in contests to win things like smokers, leather aprons, all kinds of stuff. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you next time. Who's gonna do it? You? You, Lieutenant Weinberg? You weep for Santiago and you curse the Marines. You have that luxury of not knowing what I know, that Santiago's death, while tragic, probably saved lives. And my existence, while incomprehensible and grotesque, <laughs> saves lives. <laughs>